Hello. Today we talk about uh, backdooring Keras machine learning model files. And when we talk about backdooring model files, what I mean here is not actually to insert bias into a model so that inference would produce incorrect results. What we mean here with backdooring is actually inserting malicious code into the model file that when the model is being loaded or used, will actually take control of the computer that hosts the model. This is a very serious uh, security threat for machine learning systems, one that we will explore in detail, showing how we can backdoor a Keras model and also how we can detect it and then how to use tooling that you can build into your CICD pipelines, for instance, to make sure you do not have such exposure. Okay, let's get started. I created this Jupyter notebook file in Colab that you can use and walk through if you want to follow along or you can just watch the video. This is all part, so it's called machine learning attack series and vectoring Keras model files and it's part of my larger machine learning attack series that is up on my blog and also up on GitHub. So it's basically a series of posts I made over the last couple of years where we talk about how I kind of taught myself machine learning from like a security engineering and software engineering background sort of from first principle learned machine learning and then the threat model, build the system and threat model it and identified problems. And you can see here all these uh, posts that are made about, you know, some of these problems like backdooring and I also found CVEs in Visual Studio Code, the Python extension from Microsoft. And here's the threat model of the application. And this is how we walk through the threats and so on. So if you want to check that out, take a look at my blog posts on Embrace the Red. And we're gonna use this. Uh, we're gonna use this system basically, and it's sort of creating inferences from Husky AI, Husky Images. So in order to start, we're just gonna load up uh, the model. I put it up on Hugging Face. We cloned the model file. Now let's load it up and look at the architecture. You see, get so you get sort of an idea how it looks like. Okay, so this is the model convolutional network, right? A couple of layers. Um, yeah, nothing too specific or special. Let's do an inference. In order for that, I created this function that uh, loads an image and formats it correctly. And then let's run two inferences, two predictions for two images. And one is definitely not a Husky and the other one is somewhat a Husky. And you can see you know, the model is working and it's functioning. Okay, so having that, now we have our model loaded and let's now, let's now explore the backdoor. So in order to do that, we're gonna again load the model here and then we define this function, which is the backdoor layer. And we do a few things here. The first is just to demonstrate so it's easily uh, visible in the UI. We print out the text, hello world, Husky AI is not backdoored. And then the second part is actually the more interesting one, which is really about we're going to run arbitrary code, connect to a web server, download an image. And at the same time as we download the image, we're actually going to send the host name of this machine, in this case, this Google Colab machine. We're going to send that host name up to the server. Once we define that function, we can add it to the model uh, as a Lambda layer. And then we compile the model with this. So we repackage it basically, and then we store and save it with the default settings. What you can see here is actually that the backdoor, even by just building it, it already ran the code. So that's uh, interesting. So this means also we downloaded the image already. Uh, what I wanted to point out here though, is that there's different formats. There's different file formats for machine learning models. And there's like H5 and like this default one. What should do as a developer is that you use the Keras format when you use TensorFlow and Keras, which is actually by default when you load this model, it will not load this Lambda layer. But that's a set, that's not the default. So we're just gonna go with the default. Uh, we stored it since this already downloaded the image. Let me just like delete the image so we can explore it. Um, okay, so now let's move to the scary, I call it let's move to the scary part. Uh, so we now actually going to simulate the developer loading the model and you can see what happens here. 
our code executed, which means the image was now downloaded. And let's look at the model architecture. So that is gonna be interesting because in the model architecture, we now on the very bottom, you can see this did not exist originally, right? So this is the back door. We have this Lambda layer added now. And to just show that the model still works, it's doing just random predictions comparing the two. So the, the function the same, we get the same predictions. Um, to now look at the image that was downloaded. So when we loaded the model up, right, we printed that text, but at the same time, we actually also ran that code. Let me show you again. It was up here. The code that downloaded this image, right, it connected to this web server, uploaded the, sent the host name up, downloaded the image and stored it. And so this is now here. We basically can see the image that was downloaded. So we basically had arbit have arbitrary code execution on this computer here. Why this is so bad is so even like in an isolated environment like Google Colab, if you connect your Google Drive, for instance, to this Google Colab, then malware in the model file could read all your data and exfiltrate it. So this is why these threats about uh, supply chain attacks, consuming untrusted model files that might contain backdoors is such a serious threat because they can fully gain access to your data and then also navigate if you're like in a, a red team, if you try to simulate this as a red team in your company, you can then navigate and pivot uh, around in the environment. So this is like a, a way an adversary can get a foothold into an environment. The next step I wanted to show you is actually how you can inspect these model files. And I really recommend reading this uh, post here by Microsoft where they talk about, where they explain the code that I'm showing you here in more detail. But this basically explores the protobuf uh, file of that model. And it looks for all the Lambda layers and then prints actually out the bytecode here of the Lambda layer. So when you see this, you know there's some Lambda layer backdoor or doesn't have to be necessarily a backdoor, but you know there's a Lambda layer defined and that's the bytecode. And with this code snippet here with uh, the codex, you can actually disassemble the uh, the Python bytecode basically and see, you know, it defines these constants, it calls these functions, connects to this web server, right? Reads the response. So this really shows you what the byte uh, the bytecode actually is is doing. This is very interesting for you when you want to inspect uh, a model. The next thing I want to show you though, and this is now the big part is, so we showed, we talked about how there's this uh, supply chain attack threat, right? Where you consume model files that you might not be trusting or they cannot trust. Now you build an application, you run inference and you might actually get, uh, execute such backdoors. What we want to sh what I want to show you now is actually how you can use a tool from Protect AI called Model Scan that you can just point it to the model file. This could be in a CI/CD pipeline, right? And validate that the model is actually not containing arbitrary instructions in code. So, I mean, just with pip install, I installed it, and then with Model Scan dash p and pointing it to the model file we can run it and you can see it's loading up and it's now analyzing the model file our backdoor model file and it's pretty fast so you can see here the summary and it does tell us right it found one issue it rates it as medium severity and it says it's an unsafe operator it's this lambda functioning carers uh, medium might not be significant enough it probably should be high because as you can see we can run arbitrary code and take full control of the computer that we that the model get the model gets loaded on but this is just a really great tool that you should leverage to actually get insights and now knowing this you can follow the previous step right and explore the code what it actually does to determine if it's safe or not and so this is really something i highly recommend checking out Okay, so that sort of concludes this uh, brief video about backdooring model files. There's also the way an, uh, an adversary can backdoor pickle files. I posted about this in the past on my blog. So check out my blog if you're interested in uh, these topics. And I hope this was useful and interesting and have a great day. Bye-bye.